quite familiar with, usually known as the, the woman at the well. And if, if you remember the, uh, the story as Jesus met this lady, he, uh, he asked her to go and bring her husband. Immediately a storm came, no? <laughs> and her reply was, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you've rightly said. I, I had to remember now. He said, you've had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that thou saidst truly. There's a couple of things we, we learned from that. One is, God knows everything going on in our lives. He knows the good, the bad, what we've done, what we've said, what we're thinking. The other thing we learn is that living together is not marriage. <laughs> yeah, he, says, he says right there, because you're living together, that doesn't, that doesn't make it marriage. And the woman said, now here's her answer. This is, this is where we're, we're starting in verse 19. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And then she gives him her early religious question. You know, you, you meet people where they've, they've got their question that they, they put to you. Here's hers. It's not really a question, but he says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And what she's basically saying there is, which religion is right? How should we worship? Where should we worship? Verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to stop reading there for the, for the moment. Uh, her question to him basically is, well, which religion is right? Uh, where should we worship? How should we worship? You know, there's a lot of people who are asking those same things. If you talk to people about the Lord, I often go door knocking and talk to different ones, and a common reply is, oh, listen, we have our own religion. I always think, I, I never say it, but I always think to ask them, oh, when did you start your religion? <laughs> uh, I know what they mean. Uh, but they're, they're, the way they push Jesus away is by saying, oh, we're already religious. Whether it's, and my question usually when they say I have my own religion, I say, oh, is it a Christian religion? And usually the answer is yes, although not always. Uh, much of what is called worship today is not, as Jesus says here, in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of worship going on. I, I think everybody worships something or someone. There's a lot of worship going on. Some, like this woman in John chapter 4, their worship is cultural. You know, there's some people who worship the way they do because that's what they were born into. That's the way they were raised. You know, I've, I, I used to uh, work in a, a city called Fremantle. You ever heard of Fremantle? Very uh, Catholic, very Italian. In fact, some people, they wouldn't tell me they were Catholic. They'd just say, we're Italian. <laughs> uh, there are some Baptists in, in Italy, but it uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be many. And uh, their belief is cultural. It's not based on scripture. It's not based on a personal working out of what they think the truth is and, and following Jesus and so on. Uh, for many people, their worship is what I would call soul worship, not spirit. God says here it's to be in spirit and in truth. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. There's a lot of people who worship because that's what pleases them. That's what pleases their mind or their will or their emotions. And they're not really worshiping or they're not worshiping to please God who is supposedly the object of their worship, but they're worshiping to please themselves. You know, a lot of times you'll talk to people and you hear things about different churches and they do what they do because that's what they enjoy doing. And it can be some really, it can be some really unusual things that, that people do to, to worship. Some of it downright heathen. You know, there's people who cut themselves and beat themselves and you know, do all kinds of, of strange things. Uh, there's even so-called Christian churches where it's mainly a performance. You know, the performers get up and everybody watches them. And, and sometimes those performers move from that stage to the world stage without missing a beat. 
You know, because that's what they are. They're performers. Colossians chapter 2, verse 23 calls that will worship. It uses that expression in uh, Colossians uh, 2, 23. In fact, turn there if you, if you would, Colossians chapter 2. This is not a seminar on worship or anything. We're only going to touch on a few things this morning. But I want to give you three, three main things today from, from the Word of God. Here in Colossians chapter 2, in verse 23, he uses that expression, uh, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body. A lot of different religions, they, they think that neglect is worship. You know, if, I, if I do without things, that's worshiping God. Or uh, if I show humility, or if I, uh, you know, if I do, if I submit, uh, I make my will uh, to be, to do something that God wants me to do. Listen, it's not our will, it's God's will that's important. Let me start in, in verse 20 there, Colossians chapter 2. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men? which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The object of our worship is the Lord. It's not us. It's not how we feel about it. You know, we don't gather here today to, to make ourselves feel happy and good. and You know, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to worship the Lord. And let me say this. The Bible says whatsoever you do, you, you know, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. I, I believe that everything we do should be worshiping God. Yesterday, uh, me and the three girls uh, went to the beach to worship the Lord. We had a hamburger, and, and we made sandcastles, and we found bugs, and we did it for the glory of God, and we did it to worship the Lord. We come here today to worship the Lord. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather not have gone to the beach, but I did it because I felt like that's what my family needed, and that's what my wife wanted to do, and that's the, the girls enjoyed it. And you know, there's sometimes I don't feel like coming to church. I'll be honest with you like the one man was, was talking to his wife and he said, I'm not going to church today. He said, nobody there likes me and I don't like anybody there. He said, well, you've got to go to church. You're the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always come to church because I want to. I come for the glory of God and I come to worship him. Whether I want to or not. Now, I need to do it with a heart that's right, don't I? But I need to do it for the glory of God. Uh, the Samaritan woman used her worship to resist dealing with her sins and coming to Christ. The Lord confronts us right where we, where we are, doesn't he? He talked to her right where she was. Come bring your, bring your husband. <laughs> he, he knew what her problem was. And her, her way to deal with that was, oh, well, you say you should worship this way, and we say you should worship that way. Jesus said, listen, there's coming a day when you won't worship here or there. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, I don't know what you're, or if you're using some kind of worship to keep God at bay, but listen, that's a big mistake. To worship in spirit and in truth, number one, you have to have the right entrance. You need to start right. And it's not by works of the flesh. It's not by confidence in yourself. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 and, and verse 3, he, he uses that expression when he says, We are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You, you, you come to worship God not by something of yourself. Oh, I've been baptized or I'm a good person. Yeah, that's the most common answer I get when I ask people if they're a Christian. Oh, I'm a good person. I was baptized. I go to church. I have my own religion. God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a blessing that we can come to God through Jesus Christ. He's the way. He's always been the way. In the Old Testament, when they sacrificed a lamb, John the Baptist saw Jesus and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I, I don't know what all John the Baptist knew, but Jesus knew when he came, he was going to be the Lamb slain. His blood shed for our sins. That's been the truth right since Adam and Eve sinned. He's the Savior. He's the only way to God. To worship God in spirit and in truth, we have to start right. And the start is Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. One of the things I'm trying to encourage you to do this morning is not to lean to your own understanding. Don't think you can go to God your way. Don't think you can go to God with your culture or you know, whatever it is, that you, the religion that you're counting on. You can only go to God through Jesus. God says that's the only way. John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Very dogmatic statement, isn't it? The word confidence, you know, to put our confidence in the Lord means trust. It means to trust him. We have no confidence in the flesh, but our confidence is, is in the Lord, our trust, our faith. In Acts 16, 31, uh, the people asked the disciples, what must we do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? He said, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. In Romans 10, 13, it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, if he's your Lord, he's saved you. We're not saved by worship, but we are saved to worship. You know, there's, there's no worship that you can do that will make you a Christian. When you get saved, when you put your trust in Christ, you'll want to worship the, the lamb for sinners slain. If your confidence is in yourself, that's not good enough. If your confidence is in a church or a ceremony, that's not good enough. To worship God in spirit and in truth, you have to come to God through Jesus Christ. John 1.12, he said, as many as received him, and the him is Jesus, many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What a wonder it is. How, how simple that is. And yet we, we try to make it so complicated. Number one, the worship God in spirit and in truth, we have to start right. The entrance is Jesus Christ. Secondly, to worship God in spirit and in truth, we have to have the right guide. It's not whatever we think or feel. Yes, some of us... You may have experienced it where you really felt right about something and you were wrong. <laughs> I've had that happen. You know, you think, this is, this is good, this is right. And oh, you know, it can be sometimes the worst mistake you ever make kind of a thing. Uh, we can't go by our feelings, we, especially with, with eternity. And we can't go by what we think because the Bible says we're deceived. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Listen, you'll fool yourself. The Bible is our guide. Jesus was talking to the Father in prayer. And in John 17, 17, he said, Thy word is truth. Thank you. He was praying about his disciples. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's what we need. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew 15. Here's a, a negative example. This is the opposite of the way we should be. Matthew 15 Let me start reading in verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They wash not their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not their father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. And what he's saying there, 
God, God specifically says we're to honor our parents in the Bible, in the Old Testament. What they would say was, oh, I've given my money to God. I can't help my parents. So they'd made a new rule that they considered more important than God's rule. Listen to what Jesus says. Ye hypocrites. Now he's saying that specifically to them. He's looking them in the eye. He's probably pointing his finger at them. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see, for us to worship God in spirit and in truth, we can't go by the commandments of men. We can't go by human traditions. We've got to go by God's word. Now, it wasn't that his disciples were eating food with dirty hands. They just weren't washing in the ceremonial way that the scribes and Pharisees had decided that you had to do it. I don't know, you know, three times to the left and four times to the right. and you know, I don't know what, what their, their tradition was. They had clean hands. They just hadn't done it the way that the scribes said you should do it. And so Jesus gets straight to the point, just like he did with the Samaritan woman. You know, you say you got to wash your hands a certain way. Well, the Bible says you got to treat your parents a certain way. What about that? <laughs> you see, uh, we need to be guided by God's word if we're going to worship in spirit and in truth. In, in verse 6, they weren't honoring God's word. In verse 7, God says they were hypocrites. You know, a hypocrite is someone who says one thing and does another. They say they believe the Bible, but they don't pay any attention to it. Verse 8 says their hearts did not belong to God. That was the problem. If we're going to worship God, we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our spirit with his spirit. Our truth, his truth. We need to go by God's word. In uh, verse 9, he says their worship was vain. We're talking about worship this morning. That word vain means empty, useless. There's a lot of worship goes on in our world. Much of it is just empty and useless. You know, I've known people, for instance, pardon me if I use a specific illustration, some churches, when they read, they do their scripture reading, they stand up. Nothing wrong with that. I, I choose not to do that. I'll tell you the reason I do that is I feel like you can understand it better if you're seated and, and comfortable. And the main thing for me is that you hear and understand the word of God. I have nothing wrong, and sometimes we do stand when we read it. But what I'm saying is this. I've known people who are really disgruntled that we didn't stand and read the scriptures. It really bothered them. But those same people wouldn't obey the scriptures. They'd go out and disobey the, the word of God. I won't get specific as to what they, they did, but listen, it's much more important that our heart be right with God than that we stand or sit or Stand in our head while we read the scriptures. It's not the traditions of men. It's that our heart is right with God. Let me give you a couple of things about worshiping uh, God in, in truth and guided by the Bible. Number one, you need to read the Bible with understanding. You know, it's not enough just to say, oh, I read, I read my Bible this morning. I, I've done it. You probably have done it. Well, you read the Bible and you get nothing out of it. Listen, we need to read the Bible with understanding. Ephesians 1.18, he says, he's praying for them, and he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the exceeding greatness of his power. And, and he goes on, he says, I'm praying that you'll understand the word of God. We need to read the Bible with understanding. The more you understand the Bible, the more you'll worship God. I can guarantee that. The more you understand it, the more you'll worship him. Secondly, we need to read the Bible with reverence. This is not just a, this is not foolishness. This is not just something else we're doing. We're hearing from God. We, we have a priceless treasure here. There is no price you could pay for what we have in our Bible. Psalm 29, uh, verse 1, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We need to read our Bibles with, with reverence. See, worship involves studying what God is saying. Uh, the Bible tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God. I've seen people handle the Bible irreverently. 
When I was in grade seven, our teacher used to play with us a game called Fickle Finger of Fate. He'd take a dictionary and he'd say, now this, this is going to describe Billy Bramblett. He'd you know, point to a place in the dictionary. It was fun. Some people read their Bible like that. God, speak to me today. Billy, I've performed the thoughts of his heart. Flattered, and that's my message from God for today. Listen, that is to handle the Bible irreverently. That's not how God speaks to us. It's not some game we're playing. Read the Bible uh, logically and with understanding and read it with, with reverence. Understanding that God is, is a person and communicates as a person. Don't misapply it and use it foolishly. I just happen to hear, I, I don't watch religious television generally, um, but I just happen to be watching one time and uh, they were talking about, I, I don't know if you remember in the Old Testament when the Philistines had taken the Ark of God and they were having all kinds of trouble, so they sent it back. They got some cows and they hitched them to a cart and they sent them on their way. And the Bible says the cows were lowing as they went. That was their message. Low, cows were lowing as they went. And all that that meant for us is, it was just foolishness. It was just, I'll be honest, it was stupid. <laughs> uh, that's not how to handle God's word. Not just to take things out of context and try and make them say something to us. If we're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, we're going to have to take the Bible seriously. You should at least know there's an Old and New Testament. You should know that God, uh, some of the things that God has said, if you've been saved more than five minutes, you know, you need to be reading it and familiar with it. Uh, one man said, uh, you need to read it so much till your blood is bibbling. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a real word, but uh, that will lead you to reverence. If you'll understand what God is saying, you'll reverence it. And that will lead you to the third thing, obeying him. You'll want to obey him. Obey what the Bible says. That's real worship. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Truth. The word worship means to bow down. It means to reverence. Basically, it has to do with being a servant. You know, a servant, <laughs> servant doesn't get to vote, you know. Uh, a real servant, the master says, do this, and they do it. Or they're in trouble. Uh, when the master speaks, they have to listen and, and obey. Turn with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 17. I found this really interesting, how he goes from, from one thing to another here. Luke 17, verse, verse 5. Worship, being a servant. Uh, Luke 17, 5. Here's a great uh, statement or question. The apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Man, that's a great prayer, isn't it? That's a good thing to, to bring to the Lord. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. That's an amazing statement. I can't say I understand everything about it. But you know, here he gets to being a servant. He goes right from faith to being a servant. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meet. When the servant comes in, you don't say, oh, have a break. Go, you know, have a Kit Kat. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me till I've eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? Here's an old English word, I trow not, I think not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We've done that which was our duty to do. Listen, being a servant, it's not a, a big deal when we do what we're told to do. Yeah, I, I talk to people all the time where they've done one little thing for the Lord. Man, they, they've given themselves a trophy and putting things on the wall. And, well, they're really pleased at that one thing they did for the Lord, you know. Listen, if we're going to be servants of the Lord, every day we're going to be doing what the Lord tells us to do. That's worship. We're, we're bowed down before him. What do you want from me today? That's real worship. And the question that comes to my mind is, whose servant am I? Whose servant are you? And you know, if we're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, number one, we have to come the right way. We, have to, we can only come through Jesus. Secondly, we, we need to be guided the right way. We need to be guided by God's word. This is really simple this morning, isn't it? 
thirdly, if we're going to worship in spirit and in truth, we have to do it with the right purpose. You know, unfortunately, we can do the right things and not have a heart for God. You can preach and not have a heart for God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, I've mentioned it already. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Yeah, that, that's a verse that you can live with. That's a verse we should live with. Anything that glories, glorifies God, we can do to worship him. Now don't do things that don't glorify God and, and say I'm doing it for the glory of God. Um, you know, I've had people actually say to me, I've been smoking 40 years for the glory of God. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if I'd agree with that. But anything that glorifies God is done to worship God. Uh, serving the Lord. You know, when Jesus was being tempted in Matthew chapter 4, he said to Satan, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And when you serve the Lord, uh, do it to worship him. There's a lot of things you can do to serve the Lord. You can teach a Sunday school class. You can talk to people about the Lord. You can clean the church building to worship the Lord. We need some people to worship the Lord in that way. I'll be honest with you. There's a couple things I look for to see how serious a person is about their church when, when I'm the pastor. Number one is if they come to prayer meeting. Number two is if they offer to clean the church. <laughs> I'm not trying to browbeat you here or anything. I know some of you can't. But uh, li listen, just some of the most simple things, if we'll do them for the Lord, are acts of worship. Now, we, we know, you know, praying and singing, and we, we understand those things. But we need to understand that everything we do, eat, drink, whatever we do, should be done for the glory of God. Uh, keeping God's word, uh, being faithful in church. Ephesians 5.25 talks about how, the, how the, the, the Lord loves the church and gave himself for it. If we're going to worship him, we should love what, what he loves. And we should do it to, to worship him. There, there was a lady in the church at Sencrea. I don't really know where that is, but uh, they're in Europe somewhere. Her name was Phoebe, and in Romans, she's mentioned in Romans 16.1. He says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is the servant of the church, which is at Sencrea. That was her reputation, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succorer, that's an old-fashioned word, of many and of myself also. She's been a, a protector, a mother, a carer to many, many people. Help her out now. That, that should be our reputation. Servant of the church, a person who's part of the, of the work of the ministry. In Deuteronomy chapter 26 and uh, verse 10, he talks about how our, our tithes and offerings are done as worship. Deuteronomy 26, verse 10. Now behold, I've brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me. Thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee. If you're going to give, do it for the glory of God. Do it to worship the Lord. I, I believe in tithing. Now, I know not everybody does. But I, I think that's a good place for a Christian to start. I don't think it's a good place to stay, but it's a good place to start. And I believe God will bless you as you commit yourself to, uh, to worshiping the Lord in that way. But you know what? You could give all your money and not worship God in spirit and in truth. There's people who give money because they've been bad this week. And they think, oh, if I put something in the, in the offering, maybe God will like me. <laughs> maybe he'll overlook what I did, you know. Uh, one of the examples in uh, 2 Corinthians 8 is the church at Macedonia. They were poor people, and yet they gave, and they were able to send an offering to help other Christians and, and so on. And the Bible says that the, the secret was that they first gave their own selves to the Lord. You give yourself to the Lord, and anything you have, hey, no worries. That belongs to God. But look again at Psalm 29. We, we read this already once, but... Psalm 29, verses 1 and 2. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're to 
we're to give glory to God. We're to treat him with respect. You know, I, I find a lot of people treat God very disrespectfully. They talk over him. They ignore him. They contradict him. Very disrespectful. We need to give God glory. We need to come through Christ. We need to believe his word. We need to have a heart that's right with him. He says as well, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That has to do with dealing with sin. Listen, God offers us forgiveness. What a blessing it is that we can be forgiven. And he says to give him your strength. Worship the Lord. Uh, verse 1, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give him your strength. You're going to give your strength somewhere. You know? You're going to spend it here. You're going to spend it there. Why not primarily give it to the Lord? Give your strength to the Lord. Worshiping the Lord. And like I said, it's unfortunate, but we can do right without having a heart for God. Now, those people in Matthew chapter 15, it's not that they never did anything right. They did a lot of right things. But Jesus said they hadn't given him their heart. Those scribes and Pharisees, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's the secret of worship. Give God your heart. It starts by coming to him in faith through Jesus Christ. When you come to Christ in faith, the Bible says you have to do it through his word. You have to be guided by the word. We're born again by the word of God. And then as we, if we see and understand him and worship him, we're going to want to obey him, and love him. What a blessing. You know, someday we're going to stand before God. I want to hear him say, well done, good, faithful servant. Now, I know I'm not good in myself and I know I'm not always faithful. But I want to try to be that, that kind of servant for the Lord. I want to yield myself to him. I would ask you two questions this morning in conclusion. The first one is, are you his servant? In other words, are you saved? Giving your heart to Christ. In uh, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus talks about how that some people are going to stand before God and God's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And they're going to say, but wait, we did all kinds of things in your name. Never knew you. You've got to come through Christ. You have to have a heart for God. Earlier in that same passage, he said, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight or, or restricted is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Listen, if you want to go the way most people go, he says, that'll be easier, but it leads to hell. If you'll go the way Jesus calls you, the way of the cross, it won't be as easy, but it leads to heaven. And he guarantees it. Are you his servant? Are you saved? Jesus is the narrow way. He's the only way to God. Secondly, are you faithful? Are you worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Jesus changed that woman in John chapter 4. You read the whole thing. Boy, she, she was charging around town saying, you need to come meet this guy. He told me everything I knew. This must be the Christ. <laughs> she wasn't saying anymore, you know, well, where do we worship? What's, you know, what's the story? No, she's saying, this is the Christ. Come and meet him. That was her message. Well, Jesus' message to you this morning is, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, a lot of we don't like the sound of that, that word yoke, burden. Listen, you hook up with Jesus, he'll take the load. He'll give you a purpose in life. He'll give you work for eternity. He'll bless you. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. What a pity it would be to work your whole life and have it count for nothing. If you connect up with Jesus, it'll count for everything. What a blessing. This morning, let me encourage you. Think about this, this truth this morning. Are we worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Are we doing what we do for the glory of God? That's what God wants. Let's go to him in prayer this morning. Our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. And uh, God's word can condemn us. It can uh, 
encourage us? God's word. This morning, deal with what God has said to you through his, his word this morning. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you that we can know the truth. Father, if, I pray if there are any here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to see that, help them to trust you. Lord, help them to repent of their sin and call upon you as Savior. Father, help us as a church to be growing in, in faith. Help us to be reaching our friends and neighbors. Help us to worship you, Lord, in, in everything we do. I pray this in Jesus' name.